In this video, we'll talk about the morphogen gradient. This is a fundamental concept in developmental biology and not properly explained anywhere. So morphogens are diffusible biochemical molecules that can determine the cellular fate. And this cell fate determination depends on the concentration, magnitude and timing of the morphogen. So this is the source cell in green that secretes several molecules shown by these green dots. And that can be received by nearby cells, which would be patterned eventually. So they are the responder cells. And we can obviously understand the concentration of molecules are more towards the source than the end of the responders. And based on this concentration, there could be different outcome in cellular fate. Let's say fate number one, fate number two, or fate number three. And all of these can possibly depend on the morphogen concentration and the signaling that is evoked by the morphogen. So how morphogen gradient can influence cell fate specification? Let's understand that part. Cells that are exposed to high level of morphogen can activate a several set of genes. And the cells that are exposed to lower levels of morphogen, that can also activate a different set of genes and thereby two different fates are evoked. So obviously, let's say based on the concentration of morphogen, there could be different transcriptional or gene regulatory program that can be activated. That might lead to fate number one. When we have intermediate concentration of morphogen, that might lead to fate number two. When we have, let's say, very less concentration of morphogen, that might activate a completely different set of transcriptional module that lead to fate number three. This is how we can understand how morphogen gradient is kind of interpreted. We would elaborate on that. But let's talk about in details how the responder cells can interpret the message embedded in the morphogen gradient. But before that, let's try to understand what is the defining criteria to understand a morphogen. How do we say that this particular molecule is a morphogen? So there are multiple criteria. The particular molecule or morphogen has to be present at the right time in the right place. Second, morphogen should be shown uh, to released from a localized source. So these localized source in context of uh, mammals are known as signaling centers, which are specialized group of cells which can secrete morphogens. Also, uh, basically, um, there could be two or different more than two pathways or gene activatory program should be changed during uh, this morphogen exposure. Also, over and under expression of morphogen might lead to a predictable change. All of these criteria would define what a morphogen is. Now, let's talk about interpretation of the morphogen gradient. So, morphogen gradient can shape up cellular fate and the understanding lies in different levels. So first of all, morphogen secretion leads to a plethora of changes downstream. For example, let's say there are specific tissue specific uh, transcription factors or transcriptional modulators which are present in one cell type not, not versus other can give rise to different outcomes. So that leads to a tissue specific competence. There could be morphogen dynamics, that means the signal inside the morphogen could be interpreted differentially based on space and time. So it matters how much a cell is experiencing a morphogen and the absolute magnitude of this. And all this thing is changing a transcriptional module eventually which leads to change in cell fate as we can see. So basically we can Im imagine cell fate specification in a three different stage factor like first morphogen induction then the interpretation of the morphogen signal and the outcome is fate determination. Now interpretation of the morphogen gradient is quite difficult and also the morphogen secretion kinetics could be complicated. For example if we consider these green cells who are secreting morphogens they can secrete the morphogen in a steady state level over time that means they are fairly secreting this particular morphogen in a constant rate. There are other possibilities like it, it is secreting the morphogens in a pulsatile manner over time. So it's a time variant secretion. There could be possibilities like 
time dependent increase in secretion or time dependent decrease in secretion based on the secretion kinetics the response kinetics would be also different and together the secretion and the response kinetics can shape up the downstream processes and lead to different cellular fate now let's talk about some examples of morphogens and many examples come from the fruit fly in the fruit fly, in the context of wing development, one of the very important morphogen is DPP. The DPP gradient determines the uh, several wing, wing components. So based on this DPP gradient, in about 50 hours of time, there are specific gene expression such as SAL and OMB. And as we move far away from the DPP source, OMB is only expressed and based on this differential gene expression, different fate is chosen along the wing. So in the mature wing, the anterior wing blade and the posterior wing blade is differentiated just by the DPP gradient. Now we can get another example from Xenopus. In Xenopus embryo, we can see the activin and XNR gradient leads to specification of specific structures. So this is the animal vegeta and the vegetal pole, that means the anterior posterior pole and the dorsoventral pole. In that particular re region, there is a nucoop center, which is a signaling center, which can secrete activin and XNR. This kind of uh, morphogen shape up different gene expression in different region. So from the dorsal to ventral region, there are differences in gene expression that lead to eventually acquisition of different fate. So the dorsal most region now becomes notochord or spemen center. The lateral region becomes muscle cells and the ventral most region produces blood cells. So now there are different outcomes shaped by the morphogen gradient. Now let's talk about experiments that demonstrate the morphogen gradient activity. So there are experiments done on cell cultures where on a a sheath of cells, some beads soaked in activin was placed. So there were four nanomolars of activin. And in a control experiment, only beads without any morphogen was placed. And it was left for several uh, hours. And after few days, it was observed that there are differences in terms of gene expression in the activin soaked bead. And this has a positional effect. That means the cells which are immediately uh, close to the activin bead shows expression of guzcoid gene. And the cells which are slightly away from the activin bead shows XBRA expression. That means just by changing the distance from the morphogen, different genes can be expressed and different fates can be acquired. So overall, this can be understood in format of graph. Just by changing the distances, different fates can be achieved because different cells can experience the morphogen in a different level and for different duration of time. So there could be concept of gene expression threshold. That means certain amount of activin is required for let's say uh, expressing the XBRA gene. And that threshold is let's say higher for the guzcoid gene. So that is why cells which are absolutely close to the beads basically uh, lead to express, express uh, the guzcoid gene because that has higher threshold and the cells which are very far away they express the XBRA gene because it has low threshold. So there are gene expression threshold which adds a layer of complexity in terms of understanding cell fate specification. Now let me tell you the complication. We are only thinking morphogen is secreted and that morphogen is uh, received by the nearby cells. It's not the only thing that happens. There could be other antagonist molecule which is counteracting the activity of these morphogens. So there could be a counter gradient of inhibitors and this has been seen in the development of ventral nerve tube patterning. So in the ventral nerve tube, there is notochord, which is a source of morphogen SSH or sonic hedgehog. So sonic hedgehog has a gradient from ventral uh, side to the dorsal side. Also glia, which is a responder, has a similar gradient and this is expected. But there is a 
glee inhibitor or glee repressor which has a opposite gradient and that shapes up how the progenitor cells would experience the SSH signaling and that lead to different outcomes. The signaling dynamics is interpreted differentially in space and time that lead to differences in transcription factor expression, master regulator expression, which leads to different fate along the dorsoventral axis. Now, let's talk about what are the molecular mechanisms which can possibly lead to changes, how actually morphogens can work. So let's say this signal is acting as a morphogen, it can work like a autoregulatory feedback loop. So signal is uh, giving rise to or activating a transcription factor which is auto activating itself. So it's working like a feed forward loop. This kind of signaling mechanism is common. It's happening in the vertebrate uh, nerve, uh, neural tube development. So where the roof plate or the dorsal side is secreting wind and wind is the signal and the transcription factor here is the PAX3. PAX3 is uh, auto-regulating its own expression by a feed-forward loop. This feed-forward loop could be a bit more complicated, so there could be cascade feed-forward loop. In this cascade feed-forward loop, the product of the previous gene help the expression of the next gene. So basically, it, it basically works like an amplifier. Now there could be mutual repression. Mutual repression means signal induces two transcription factor, but each of these transcription factor mutually repress their own activity. And that lead to sharp tissue boundaries. That means the protein level would be dropping sharply at a particular boundary. And uh, this, this is an important factor to create specific segments in ac across a body line. So mutual repression is very important to understand how morphogens can possibly work. And the last thing which is more complicated and involves all of the previous mentioned uh, strategies is basically a transcription factor network which can have like all these autoregulatory feedback loop, there could be having feed forward loops and also mutual repression acting together as a network. This is how we can understand how possibly a morphogen can work and shape up development of specific tissues into specialized cell types. I hope this was useful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can get more notes and flashcards in my Facebook page, Instagram. You can support my channel via PayPal, Paytm and UPI. See you in next video.